Our research question is, how is University of Bristol part of the moral landscape of the slave trade in the city? Bristol was involved in the transatlantic slave trade between the 17th century and the 19th century and was one of the three main trading ports within the UK due to its prime coastal location with easy access to the rest of the country. Rich merchants financed over 2,000 voyages with 500,000 enslaved Africans on board. As a result, much of the city's subsequent wealth originated from profits of the transatlantic slave trade. A trend of the memorialisation in the city is evident, with slave traders like Colson a key figure, whilst enslaved people leave little to no mark on the city. This will be discussed in more depth in the next slides. Before going to Bristol, we were all interested in key characters who were involved in the slave trade that we had learned about in our lectures on forced labour. We were especially curious about how these figures were represented in Bristol and how they created a memorial landscape of the slave trade in the city. For example, Colston's statue before it was recently pulled down. Colston was a prominent part of the Royal African Company which traded African slaves. The road on which we found his plinth when we visited Bristol was also called, called Old Colston Avenue and we found his name constantly around the city. As we went around Bristol, following our rabbit hole of its memorial landscape of the slave trade, we were particularly interested in a statue of Burke we found which was put up by William Henry Wills. We had seen the Wills building at the university earlier in the day and wondered if they were connected. After a simple Google search, we realised that the Wills family were prominent tobacco merchants profiting off product produced by slaves. They were also key contributors in the foundation of the university. From this, we were especially interested in the university's relation to the slave trade and how it potentially also contributes to the memorial landscape of the slave trade in Bristol. After visiting the Wills Memorial Building in Bristol, we became interested in how and why this building and other aspects of the university are involved in the memorial landscape in the city. From a simple Google search, we found out that the Wills family were extremely prominent in the city and must have had a significant involvement in the university. We decided that the best place to start our research was on the Bristol University website to see if we could find out what they say about their links to the slave trade. The one figure that immediately stood out to us was that 89% of the wealth used to found the university was dependent on the labour of enslaved people. This search also led us to find out that the enslaved labour from which the profits came from were linked to all three names represented on the university crest, Wills, Fry and Colston. While on the university website, we became aware of Professor Olivette Attell, who is actively investigating the university's links with the history of enslavement. We decided to email her and the history department at Bristol University to continue down our rabbit hole and further ask questions about the university's links to the slave trade. We received an email back from Dr Richard Stone, who works within the Bristol University History Department, and he shared his article with us entitled Slavery and the Founding of a British Institution, the Wills, Fry and Colston Families and the University of Bristol. This was an extremely helpful exercise for us to carry out as we were able to gain access to academic research relating directly to our rabbit hole, despite it being unpublished. From this article, we were able to gain a better understanding of the university's connection to the slave trade. The Wills and Fry families made their fortunes by trading tobacco and sugar grown by enslaved people, and between them they contributed 66% of the institution's total donations within the first 50 years of its establishment. This immediately highlighted to us how intricately linked Bristol University is to slavery. And one of the key contributions came from Henry Overton Wills, who donated £100,000 to the university, which today is estimated to be a total of over £12 million. One of the first things that captured our interest was University of Bristol's original coat of arms, which within its logo has elements symbolising powerful families we have talked about already, namely Wills, Fry and Colston. The coat of arms relevance to our research was stimulated by a Daily Mail article we came across that was published in the wake of the Black Lives Matter movement, which brought into question the origins of the coat of arms. Further research into the original coat of arms seen in the image led us to find out what each element represents. The Wills family is represented by the sun, the Fry family is represented by the horse, and Edward Colston is represented by the dolphin. The ship within the centre of the design represents Bristol's industrial marine past, most of which was either directly or indirectly linked to the exchange of slaves and goods produced by those enslaved. The three families all benefited to varying extents from slave labour, so this therefore directly links the university coat of arms with the slave trade. 
Despite having died two centuries before the founding of the university, Colson is still represented on the coat of arms, and this was surprising to us. Further research led us to find that Colson's niece, who was heir to his fortunes from the slave trade, made donations to the university through the Colson Educational Trust and the Charles Colson Trust. The Wills family invested significantly in the university and it may not have existed without their donations, including the 100,000 donated by Henry Overton Wills III. Examples of buildings named after the family include the Wills Memorial Building, H.H. H. Wills Physics Laboratory and Wills Halls. Their donations are considered transformative. The Wills Memorial Building is named after Henry Overton Wills III and was built by his sons George and Henry Wills after his death. The construction was then completed in 1925. The building is part of the memorialisation of slavery within Bristol because of the Wills family connection to the slave trade. However, in 2017, 706 Bristol University students signed a petition to rename the building to remove any connection commemorating the Wills family. Some of the protesting university students, according to Dr Richard Stone, noted that the family financed the university with slave profit and money. The students argue that the money donated by Henry Overton Wills III was made through the selling of tobacco, most of which was grown in the plantation in the south of the US, where the majority of the workforce was enslaved. They argue that it was disrespectful to those who suffer from slavery to name such a prominent building after a man who benefited from it, even if it was indirectly. Despite this, the building has still become part of the historical landscape of the city and is extremely prominent on Bristol's skyline. In 2012, the university co-sponsored a primary school and called it the Dolphin School, the Dolphin being a representative of Colston as seen in their coat of arms. The school also designed their badge with two dolphins on it. We found it interesting that they still represent Colston in many parts of Bristol. This led us to realise that the memorial landscape of the slave trade in relation to Bristol University is still being constructed and isn't a thing of the past. This, in many ways, contradicts the petitions students have signed in order to reduce the memorial landscape of the slave trade at Bristol University, such as the renaming of the Wills Building. Our time in Bristol and the further research surrounding our line of inquiry yielded much success in developing an understanding of the University of Bristol's role in the memorial landscape of the city. We noticed that the university's ties to the Atlantic slave economy was rich in its memorialisation, and the plethora of information available on it. This led us to wonder about the state of memorialisation of the slaves themselves. There was seemingly little mention of the slaves. Our continued line of inquiry would see us investigate this lack of memorialisation and any plans to untangle the university's link to the slave trade, as well as recognise the suffering of the slaves through which the university gained so much. We could investigate the current petition from students to remove Will's name from the university building, Alongside this, we would interview the organisers of this petition to investigate their targets and their desire to enact the change. Additionally, we could look into plans from the university itself to memorialise the slaves, educate students and further explore its ties to slavery. In a similar move to Cambridge University, who are conducting an in-depth two-year academic study into the way it contributed to, benefited from or challenged the slave trade, we could conduct research into Bristol's plans for this. It would also be beneficial to interview any professors at the university who are already researching this and tie this into our line of inquiry. In summary, our research began with the information provided in week two of the lectures, where we were interested by how Colson was represented across the city. We then decided to investigate other types of memorialisation in further depth whilst in Bristol, including Perry's Bridge. We were intrigued to see how slave traders have left their mark on the city whilst the enslaved people are underrepresented. After the trip to Bristol, we looked into the Wills Memorial Building and proceeded to reach out to professors at the University of Bristol for more information regarding the university's connection to the slave trade. We also discovered that many landmarks in Bristol are still being named in relation to the slave trade today, including the Dolphin School. The following slide has our reference list.